lately um since uh for the last many years i'm uh, going into a kind of um introspective and retrospective method of looking at the world and the major uh, problems meaning since in my 77 years in this world i have had many experiences bad but mostly good uh, i look around and try to see how i fit into all that and what i have learned uh, from my past okay Uh I want to ah okay So my first question is one of identity I'm a Greek for sure but am I east or west That is not an easy uh, question to answer uh, as you will see also from uh, the material that, that I use used to um in the presentation and i have had for a long time because i was struck by the quotation from jalaluddin al-rumi the sufi uh wise man uh of many centuries ago uh who was standing i guess on a boat uh in constantinople uh between asia and europe and he said the famous i'm neither of the east nor of the west no boundaries exist in my breast meaning my heart and this is uh another uh citation uh from the same uh, saying of uh, alaluddin i'm not from the east or the west and then the religious uh the religious uh reference i'm not a christian or jew or muslim i'm not hindu buddhist sufi or zen i do not belong to any established religion or any cultural system i'm neither the body nor the soul for i belong to divine soul of my beloved so this from jalaluddin Uh, and in a sense it expresses this uh religious uh embracing uh of all other uh mm -hmm. beliefs now my first encounters uh, since childhood of the idea of east and west uh when i was in primary school uh we moved to athens after my father retired and he had fought in the greek civil war between the leftists and the rightists and i grew up uh in the midst of atrocities um which i cannot forget um and in any case in order to pay back a loan for our house we were renting within our apartment rooms to different tenants we had students from the island of crete and i learned from them recipes even though i was still in primary school but the one that i'm referring to here is a pilot of the greek air force and mind you greece was forced to take part in the korean war now what kind of interest did the nation of greece have to fight against the koreans and the chinese in the Ch in the korean war uh, that's difficult to answer but in any case the guy had come back from there uh, he had uh flown his missions as an air force pilot and of course his memories were memories of killing uh so i having just come out of the greek civil war my father on the rightist side um i was admiring him as a hero soon after that uh while i was in primary school sixth grade Uh, a greek french boy uh, moved from france to greece and was uh, our classmate and being french he was very much interested in what was happening in vietnam of course and that was the time of the siege of dien bien phu 1954 by the viet minh 
and a glorious victory by the locals against the colonials. Okay? Now, for us, at that time, it was the brave French losing. And I was very much pro-French because at that time, in addition to my primary school, I was attending classes in the Institut Francais d'Athènes, where I uh, learned my French that influenced very much my subsequent life. 1954, we stopped and fast forward to 1970, uh, when I received a postdoctoral research training fellowship from the U.S. Social Science Research Council and became senior fellow affiliate at, and this sort of fits with our title, right, for the conference, I was at the East-West Center. Uh, and I, uh, I spent some time there, which deeply influenced the rest of my life, especially working with the anthropologist Gregory Bateson, who in fact had also done field work and studies and written about Indonesia uh, in the 60s. And you know what Indonesia in the 60s goes back to. I remember him coming back from a trip uh, to Indonesia, escorting some U.S. Uh, students and telling me of stories he heard in Indonesian Kampung about the local river running instead of water, human blood. And this was the time of Suharto and the uh, fighting and the massacres and so on and so forth. Now, specific experiences about violent conflict between East and West at the East-West Center where, uh, when after I moved to the University of Hawaii within which was the East-West Center, uh, some of my students graduated and I remember two boys who joined the American army and went to fight in Vietnam and came back to Hawaii and to the university so proud of what they did in Vietnam. One of them telling us how he was machine gunning people on the ground from his helicopter. The other telling us how he was operating a mortar and bombing a village on the other side of the mountain. And I remember so outraged, I asked him, I said, did you even see the people you were killing on the other side of the mountain? You couldn't even see them. You don't know who they were, women, children, okay? Uh, and on the positive side, I had this uh, encounter uh, with a Vietnamese student who was at the time um, studying at the University of Hawaii. We were climbing a mountain with a group of other students and colleagues. I happened to be next to him. We started chatting and he confessed to me uh, his personal feelings as a Vietnamese against the colonial powers and the new colonial uh, U.S. Uh, army fighting against his people in Vietnam. So these were some of the very deep uh, personal experiences I had with regard to East-West tension and not just tension, outright, outright bloody conflict. Now, my first direct encounter with Indonesian art was at the East West Center, um, where an Indonesian artist, Afandi, who by the way has the same name as me, it's the borrowed Greek name Afendis that went over to Arabic, Turkish, Persian, and so on and so forth, and reached, I didn't know until then, all the way to Indonesia. So the artist Pandi painted a mural on a wall of the administrative uh, building of the East-West Center and the University of Hawaii. Wisdom of the East. And you see here, I guess, Gandhiji and others. And a, um, I think a figure from the Wayang Kulit. Okay. Unfortunately, I never met uh, Afandi. So now my main question is, what do we mean by the terms West and East? Is it just a line that 
runs across the globe, across the world, and separates, you know, geographically west and east, geographic, political, or both. Asia versus Europe plus Americas. Is it communist versus capitalist? Because the term has been used in all these uh, contexts. So I'll go back, being a Greek, I love history and even prehistory. So I'll go back to the earliest conflict that I presume uh, is the earliest conflict between East and West. Um, and that is the Trojan War. Uh, you may have seen it uh, as a Hollywood film. You may have read the original uh, Homer's uh, Iliad. Ilion is uh, Troy. So Iliad is the war against Troy by the Greeks, a kind of loose confederation of Greek states. Okay. Now, in his poem, uh, Homer talks about beautiful Helen, who was from Sparta uh, and who fled to Troy with the Trojan uh, prince. Okay, and it was that which uh, caused, triggered uh, the war. So the question is, uh, was the war because of a beautiful woman or something else? Eros, you know the word erotic from the god of love and physical love. Call it sex if you want, okay? Um, so was a war, the first war between the East and the West uh, because of Eros or was it because of precious commodities, uh, especially for the elites, because everyday people, uh, farmers and uh, craftsmen uh, didn't have that much use for gold, but it was there for uh, the elites. So uh, gold, and you have also the other tale of the Argonauts, okay, and their trip all the way to what is now Ukraine, called his. Uh, to get back the Golden Fleece. Here we have a map uh, of the world um, early on, before our era, and this was the time when the Greeks, uh, the Mycenaeans, uh, as uh, the main group was known at the time, um, led other fellow Greeks uh, against basically what was an empire because Troy was a part of the Hittite Empire and the reason was that the Hittites had conquered uh, a Greek city on the coast of uh, sort of west of the age of Hittite there on the map which was the main trade center for importing goods from Anatolia from this part of uh, Asia uh, to Greece and the converse uh, uh, exporting Greek goods uh, to that part. And you can see that we have the Hittite Empire, uh, the Assyrian uh, Empire, we have Kassite, Babylon, and of course the ancient uh, Egyptian uh, kingdom. This was one of the newer uh, phases. And here uh, let me see. We have uh, the world in 400 BC, Eurasia, basically, because America was still not quote unquote discovered. And it's interesting to see uh, how the Persian Empire in yellow is huge, even compared to China. Okay, because at that time China was fragmented uh, into different uh, states. Okay. And you have uh, in red the Hittites uh, and the Phoenicians. Um, I consider the Phoenicians the uh, ancestors of the Palestinians and to some extent uh, many Greeks because there were Phoenician settlements, uh, commercial settlements uh, in Greece uh, as well. But the green is the Phoenicians in the Maghreb, uh, Northwest Africa, 
and some of the islands of the Western uh, Mediterranean. Uh, and here uh, we have uh, a kind of uh, more contemporary painting of the Argo, the ship of the Argonauts, on which these ancient Greek heroes uh, sailed all the way to uh, the Black Sea and what is now, as I said, the Ukraine. Incidentally, still under war in a case of East-West conflict, because we have Colchis and its contemporary uh, area, uh, basically disputed by the Russians and the Ukrainians, and the Ukrainians are supported by the West. Okay, okay. again, the Golden Fleece. So, what was the uh, mythical sort of uh, reflection of what really happened in that conflict. Uh, here we have uh, one of the earliest uh, representations based on geographic descriptions of ancient Greeks uh, of the world. And you have Europa, Europe, okay, with different parts that you recognize, mostly uh, what is depicted is the mountains. You have uh, Libya Theriodes, uh, which is all of Africa is basically coded into Libya because that was the part that the Mediterranean people were exposed to and were not familiar yet with the rest of Africa south of the desert, of the Sahara. Uh, and it's characterized as the region of wild beasts, Theria. And then you have Asia, which basically stops at India and uh, uh, Central Asia. Here we have a much later uh, uh, depiction, about 500 years later, uh, which Indonesians are very familiar with uh, from uh, the title of, um, of the document, which is Periplus. Periplus is basically sailing around the Red Sea, but uh, it leads us all the way to India, and there is a reference to Southeast Asia through the Golden Hersonids. Chrysae in Greek is uh, golden, and there again we have uh, the gold uh, as a word or surfacing even in the reference to uh, Southeast Asia. So the Periplus was written by most likely a uh, merchant from Alexandria in Egypt, uh, who obviously sailed uh, and describes customs, cities, other towns, ports, and the goods that were traded, uh, as well as, you know, the whole process of uh, coming, trading, and going back, uh, and facing also the physical uh, threads of the sea. Ah, and what I mentioned is that uh, there is the chain of uh, bookshops in uh, Javanese uh, airports named the Periplus. And when I saw it two years ago, when I traveled to Java for the first time professionally, uh, I was extremely uh, pickled and uh, moved. Okay. So globalization, because basically with the Periplus, we have uh, one of the first instances of globalization described by a person of that time. And I see several components in globalization. Uh, we have trade, political and military control of resources. Back to the uh, Troy and the Hittites, the Persians succeeded the Hittites as an empire, uh, and the Persians uh, did have a run-in, but at the same time, uh, very close, positive contacts uh, with the Greeks. And the Greeks didn't always fight against the Persians. Some of them as mercenaries fought within the Persian domain uh, in Persian uh, civil wars among siblings for the throne, for instance. But what is quite well known is Marathon, 
uh, the place of the first major battle between the people of Athens and the invading Persians, which now is mostly known by the Marathon Run. Okay? Uh, we have Artemision, which is uh, in central Greece, basically uh, a, a cape between Steve Bacalis' uh, hometown and my island of origin, Euboea. The island of good cattle, it means in Greek. And then we have Thermopylae, Leonidas and the 300 Spartans and 700 Thespians. We have Salamis, the first major uh, sea battle, um, which the Athenians uh, won through cunning and, of course, familiarity with the sea. And then we have a long sequence uh, of um, um, conquest and rule over others, other people, by specific uh, imperial uh, powers. The Alexandrian, uh, after Alexander, his successors, uh, Alexander I, conquering uh, all the Persian Empire all the way to India, then the Hellenistic times under Alexander's uh, successors, including Cleopatra in uh, Egypt, Roman, Byzantine, which was the mutation of the Roman uh, into Greek for the Eastern Roman Empire, uh, Arab, Mongol and Turkic, including Seljuk and Ottoman, uh, Erdogan being uh, today's representative. Now, we have the interesting tale, uh, and I think we can take it metaphorically, even for our purposes, the tale of the Gordian knot. It was a rope uh, that secured uh, an ancient uh, cart uh, on a column, and the, the myth was that he who would untie this very complicated knot would become the future conqueror of Asia. So when Alexander and his army crossed over to Asia, which was Persia at the time, um, <clears throat> they took him there uh, and said, okay, uh, if you can untie this knot, you'll conquer Asia. Alexander tried, it was too difficult. So he drew his sword and cut the rope. Uh, and this is also used metaphorically uh, for a kind of innovative, non uh, expected solution uh, to a certain problem. A complicated problem is known as a Gordian knot. Now, another reference uh, to uh, our topic and also to my colleagues uh, who are the Chinese experts. Uh, at some point, after the discovery of the terracotta uh, warriors, uh, Chinese archaeologists on the site and close by sites came up with uh, the claim that Greek sculptors and physical sculptures may have in, in fact been there and helped the Chinese artists create the statues of the Terracotta warriors. And if you, if you want, you can check it, Google it, uh, and see what the evidence is. And part of the evidence was uh, in one of the Chinese tombs, DNA from the West, okay? And the West at that time was, well, but uh, the Greeks. The Silk Route um, and its uh, contemporary descendants. Um, now, I want to do uh, take a step back quickly. Culture and politics. We have all this comes up continuously in any historical overview of our topic uh, and the issue of uh, East-West relations. Uh, down to Plato's philosopher King, and I must say that in my life, being an, an ardent Democrat, uh, twice I, I wished that my elected democratically political representatives, the government, of the time uh, in Greece and many other places as well, um, 
would be as good as philosopher kings that I empirically uh, witnessed and lived under uh, were for their people, the love for their people. Because nowadays our politicians are corrupt. Uh, their pocket is the most important part of the East-West universe and so forth. And the two philosopher kings that I encountered uh, were uh, Sultan Qaboos recently gone uh, from Oman and the previous uh, king of Ireland. Religion and empire, and I touched on this briefly before. We have the Arabs and Islam, the spread of uh, Islam uh, originally with the Arabs, but then soon with uh, Persians and other people, uh, all the way to uh, southern France and the siege of Constantinople, um, which escaped at that time. West versus Middle East now, as a result of the uh, appearance of Islam, we have the Crusades. So the Crusades, I must tell you that uh, I grew up the testing and I still do, uh, because um, they were a West European uh, attempt uh, to rule over the Levant and control it in terms of trade, because even one of the documents that I read, you know, yesterday, the day before, talks about uh, religion was bad, but the trade was good with the uh, ports and countries of uh, of the Levant, of the Eastern uh, Mediterranean, after the Crusaders' uh, control. We have the Western Crusaders, Europeans, Westerners like us, but we were not Westerners, the Greeks, I mean, uh, invading and taking over um, practically the uh, entirety of uh, the Byzantine Empire uh, and then uh, ruling uh, for some time after that. Here is a painting uh, by a Western painter uh, of the taking of Constantinople by the Crusaders. The Crusaders uh, basically said they were going to free the Holy Land from the Muslims. But in order to go either by sea or on foot down to the Holy Land, Palestine, okay, they had to go through Greece and the Byzantine Empire. So in the process, they looted, they raped, uh, and they conquered, uh, including most Greek ports and islands. And this is the taking of Constantinople, current day Istanbul, uh, by the Crusaders in 1204. Um, now, I talk briefly about uh, conquest, empires, art, and looting. We have Elgin's marbles. Why are they Elgin's marbles? It's the Greek marbles, the statues from the Parthenon in the Acropolis in the middle of Athens uh, in a British museum. And we have Venus and Nike victory, okay, and Aphrodite, the two Greek uh, goddesses, basically, whose statues are in the Louvre in Paris. Okay? They never asked us if they can borrow them. They just took. So we have European colonialism and imperialism uh, rising, covering East and West. Spain, Portugal, Britain, France, Holland, which you Indonesians know very well. Italy never really got to, uh, to Asia uh, because most of its colonial uh, possessions, and rather briefly, uh, were in uh, North and East Africa. Okay, so we even have cases like buying and selling islands and lands as if they were unclaimed real estate and commodities. Alaska was bought from the Russians, okay, by the Americans, never asked the locals, the natives, okay, and Cyprus was basically bought uh, in return, in exchange for uh, services rendered by the British from the uh, Ottoman Turks, okay, never asked the locals. And before that, Cyprus was a possession of uh, 
crusader descendants. So we have greed versus heritage uh, versus traditions and so on. Now we have slowly and gradually the emergence of the U.S., uh, Hawaii. What the hell is the U.S. doing in Hawaii? Okay? Uh, where the locals have become basically an oppressed minority. For a while, we had the Americans ruling over the Philippines. We still have American Samoa and so on and so forth. And I read even yesterday an article about the hundreds of American military bases around the world. And the one that I would like to single, single out is Diego Garcia um, uh, in uh, close to the entrance to the uh, Red Sea, uh, which has been extensively used uh, in the American attacks against the Arabs, okay, Iraq and so on, uh, and of which the local people, the inhabitants, the original inhabitants, have been expelled in order to make uh, room for the military bases, airports and so on. Dictatorships are very important to focus on uh, in this part of history and the relation between East and West from Nazi Germany to Spain, or Franco, Portugal, uh, Turkey and Greece had dictators, uh, whether these dictatorships were local or foreign expired, okay, inspired. Okay? And we have Henry Kissinger involved very intimately uh, with the two dictators on both sides and the invasion of Cyprus. Then we have Korea, Taiwan, uh, Vietnam, uh, at the time, right? Thailand, Indonesia, I would call Suharto a dictator. Uh, maybe not all of you agree. Uh, Myanmar, uh, Bangladesh, uh, and of course Latin America, where dictators have proliferated. Um, and we have, you know, uh, Pinochet as one of the brutal criminal. We have pocket possessions, as I call them. Shanghai was taken for commercial purposes by the West, and we have uh, Western troops going even into the forbidden city in Beijing. We have Goa, the Portuguese, Pondicherry in India for the French, Macau uh, in uh, next to Hong Kong, okay, Malacca in Malaysia, Portuguese again, Timor Leste, uh, Portuguese, Hong Kong. British, Gibraltar, uh, a British possession at the tip of Spain and a very shameful uh, history of how it came about. Guantanamo in Cuba, which the Americans still have uh, and use it as a place of detention for uh, Muslims. Uh, Panama and Diego Garcia. World wars and their connection to East-West. Yalta, where the world was divided uh, by the three big guys, and Greece was given to the West without ever consulting with us. Then we have decolonization, globalization, recolonization, dictatorships, uh, Middle East and North Africa, and all the trouble that have gone through uh, recently, and Zionism uh, and the way it affected with the support of the West, Palestine, and the natives of Palestine. The Balkans, where my Greece is, uh, is between East and West, okay? And we have all these bodies, international bodies, um, And now, the most recent is the carving up of the Middle East and so many wars there. Uh, the first one was the coup d'etat against the democratically elected regime uh, in, uh, in uh, Iran and the bringing uh, back of the Shah, who was a good friend of the West. Okay? And also, I'd like to point out, in case some of you are not familiar, the way that the Western powers uh, carved up uh, the world and especially the Middle East and Africa. I know that the British took a map, a ruler, okay, and a pencil and put the ruler on the map 
and drew a line with a pencil. And this side was one country, that side was another country. Okay? And it happened also. I have been there, and when I lived in Oman, I crossed over from Oman to the United Arab Emirates, and my very good friend's hometown was divided by the border. So, in order to go see his mother and his brothers, he had to cross the border. Okay? Now we have ideology. Hegemony expressed even now very strongly, and I can even see it in some of the concepts of our own conference, okay? Hegemony, the dominance by the West on language, education, and culture, okay? Ideology, revolutions, key revolutions in our recent history, France, Russia, Cuba. Uh, we have wars of independence, uh, Zapata, Latin America, uh, Greece from the Ottomans, uh, Indonesia from the Dutch and so on and so forth. And the most, the one that I mentioned before and which has uh, been in my heart from the very beginning for decades, uh, Indochina. Now, another important issue, uh, which in some other ways comes up even today, and I'm involved in it, we have the slave trade. And we have Black Lives Matter. How did the Black Lives get to America? Of course, they were traded as slaves uh, because there was labor shortage in the empire. So uh, people are enslaved and exported like goods, um, like spices or I don't know what, uh, to, to uh, the imperial uh, states uh, for work in agriculture or industry. Fiji, uh, Malaya, with the bringing of other populations in order to work uh, in the rubber estates uh, and the tin mine. And nowadays, the Gulf countries, the GCC, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman itself, uh, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, uh, and uh, Qatar. And of course, uh, uh, more, more. Now, when it didn't suit them, the West militarily overthrew quote unquote bad regimes. Okay? Um, several attempts on Fidel Castro's uh, my, uh, life, uh, the Bay of Pigs, of course, the failed invasion, and then, of course, Sukarno in Indonesia. Allende in Chile and the installation of the dictator uh, Pinochet. We have international organizations and part of your research should be looking in detail into the record, the ethical record of these organizations. NATO and the Warsaw Pact on the other side. Uh, I don't know if this was East, West or North, South. We have ASEAN and CBO. Um, Simio being the uh, educational part, uh, the UN, the EU, and the GCC. East, West, North, South, geopolitics, uh, a term which uh, is uh, quite central to our concerns. And I would talk, talk here of hypocrisy and double standards. Um, we are all upset uh, by what uh, the media tell us about the Uyghurs within China, but very little is said about the Kurds, almost nothing about the Palestinians, uh, almost nothing about the Yemenis uh, and what they suffer, because the people who attack, attack Yemen and slaughter even children um, buy their weapons and sell their oil to key Central Western uh, powers. Uh, and then, of course, we have the great uh, concern in Europe about the Belarusians. I support them. Uh, but again, so much fuss about the, the Belarusians, but practically, practically nothing about the others that I mentioned. Uh, uh, rights of original populations, the Orangasli of uh, each of these uh, East places. 
the latest that I read in the news a couple of days ago was Rio Tinto, the big uh, company for mining, uh, which recently destroyed a 46,000 year old original uh, Australian Aboriginal uh, site in order to improve the extraction of uh, ore. Tibet is a so. Movement of populations uh, in different ways, refugees, uh, and right now you may have read the latest news of the biggest refugee camp uh, in uh, anywhere, basically, uh, here in Greece on one of the islands, Lesbos, uh, an island name uh, known for the wrong words, um, internally displaced people and migrants uh, and fascists. Nazis, neo-Nazis here in Greece uh, are basically uh, mixing refugee and migrant uh, status. Either way, they are awful. Uh, and then we have human trafficking. I mean, here in Greece, I read again recently an article about the trafficking of women from Moldavia, Romania and so on to work in brothels as prostitutes here in Greece. And we have slave labor being exported in the 21st century for God's sakes. Financial crisis, the pandemic, pandemic uh, bankers uh, and banks versus the people, I'm one of the victims, uh, and the imposition of austerity in the south of the west, okay, the Mediterranean countries of uh, Europe, Greece included, and for most, okay, uh, save the banks at the expense of pandemic as opportunity or threat. Okay. Here, uh, from an article in Greek of the war between the US and China uh, for control of peace, uh, because we have major investments uh, by China. The two major ports in Greece uh, were bought by Chinese companies. Um, the Americans upset and they have told repeatedly uh, Greece, even now under Trump by Pompeo, uh, that American security is threatened by Greece's uh, getting close to China in terms of financial and such investment. So a kind of a fight between the two, nicely pictured here. Sustainable development as the future to which we must turn and the Pandela already have and very much, and I have some other cases uh, from the West also. Um, my emphasis, and Ari and my other Penela friends know this, my emphasis is on education as a key to a better world. Okay, and my Malaysian friends uh, are on Sejahtra uh, leadership uh, from Al Buhari University and the, our president at that time. Uh, Dr. Zolkifi Abdul Razak. Education has been uh, demoted to a commodity uh, within this uh, Western uh, quasi empire. Skills, abil abilities dictated by industry. What we should study at the university is what the industry wants, for God's sakes. Uh, where is learning and education? Uh, thrown into. Here, me with the Penghulu, I don't know if you use the same term in Bahasa Indonesia, the head of a village in southern Thailand, uh, which was uh, enjoying the benefits of uh, work similar to the Penele in developing its village agricultural uh, economy. Uh, and I got there as part of the first Bangkok International Forum on indigenous management uh, practices. The 17 SDGs, I wanted to focus on some of them, no time. I'm stealing time from my friend Steve. Okay, uh, do check out this United Nations report, uh, which points out that the world globally, East and West and North and South has failed to meet even a single target to stop the destruction of nature. Okay. 
two minutes to wrap up. One minute or so. One minute, okay. Thank you. One minute? Okay. So, Global University Network, uh, based in Catalonia in Spain. Uh, check them out. And what I'm saying is no more West against East, uh, against West again, no more North against South, from now East plus West plus North plus South for our Earth, okay? And I propose making geopolitics, uh, not politics uh, about power and resources, but politics about Earth. Her, in Greek, it's a feminine, okay? Um, and here I'll cite Greek words which are international words. Uh, geography, geology, geometry, geopolitics, and Georgia and Giorgio, Giorgos in Greek, which is basically a farmer and agriculturalist. Okay? MDGs a good positive example from Southeast Asia and thank you for your patience uh, and I look forward to working with you in implementing some of these great uh, objectives to save ourselves and our earth. Thank you. Arie.